V Lady Cougars, his team in action tonight taking on the River Forest Lady Ingots. They are 12 and 1 this season. We'll have all that plus highlights of last Friday and Saturday action coming up right after this on Round Ball Review. Review is partially underwritten by the Razors to achieve your goals and promotion. All righty, we are back on Round Ball Review, ready to go to some scores and highlights from last week in high school basketball. And you are fired up and ready to go, I can tell. Well, <laughs> yeah. Who kept it close early. Good start for Lowell. So Ryan Bales took over, ripped down the lane right there for two. Ryan Trusty to the glass off the break for those running Jays. There's Trusty on the miss. And Shannon Brown, who flung himself into maybe the top two or three teams in Northwest Indiana with his big TV performance last week. Look at that rebound. Look at that agility going up there. Off, but that's off the ACL surgery. And then Shannon knew he was on TV, and he even no went way. one no step way. better. No way. Ooh. Off the glass Ooh, for midcourt, the three at halftime. We'll even show you that one in slow-mo coming up here, folks. You, you know, fast speed, you just couldn't enjoy it. Enough. Now, see, he practices this. Yeah. He knew the spot. <laughs> and the Jays went on and rolled past Lowell, 77-39. Shannon Brown, 22 points, 16 rebounds for the Jays. Last Friday night. Big weekend for them rolling. Nine and one, still the only losses to Maryland. We even got some Lady Jays highlights coming up Lady later Jays. in the show. <laughs> They're on a roll as well. Let's move that's on. complete coverage. That's, that's complete. Is that, Com that is complete man, coverage. Thank you very much. Because I aim to please. As Carson Cunningham shoots off the baseline, this is Andrean at Knoll. Monty Gordon gets his own rebound and lays it in. He had 17 in this one. Here's Greg Taylor for the Niners off the steal. You know, you got to love the fact that this was at Bishop Knoll, but they were wearing those gold uniforms. Made the Niners wear the white. <laughs> Explain that one to me. Off the baseline, it's Kyle Ropak off the board for two. And Noel's going to hit the three right here. Brian Bajna hits from deep. And Rick Allsbach's going to hit a jumper as well. He was a game man. Drayon led early. But Noel came on the second half, outscoring them both for 34. Tortoise 30 to 24 over the second half to pull it out. Knocked off your 59ers. The Catholic Championship. <laughs> yes, goes indeed. to Noel. They've been playing in all kind of Catholic tournaments, haven't they? <laughs> they have an unusual <laughs> schedule, too. The only team with a more unusual schedule than that is the Gary Westside Cougars. One day we got to talk about talk to <laughs> Westside about their Canceling schedule. Canceling games, rescheduling games. When are they going to play? No, they were 7-1, and, one and, and, and they were 8-1, and one and I, I found 7-1 and one of the games. I found 8 of the games instead of 9 of them, and I finally found, discovered this game that they played in Danville on a Saturday night that didn't make any of the papers. Nobody really heard about it except for the Danville folks. <laughs> yeah. And they beat them big. But Westside, an unusual schedule. They wanted Farragut a, a week or so ago. And Farragut, uh, Farragut backed, backed out. out. Okay, they wanted no part of that, That's what I heard. <laughs> Farragut rated top 10 in the nation, backs out on Westside. Actually, that's not really the truth. There's something about uh, booking dates. And Farragut would gladly, sure. Farragut would gladly sure. play Westside. <laughs> All righty. Let's check the board. Hey, did those Cardinals awaken last Friday night? We were a little rough on them, at least I was last week. <laughs> well, they, but you know, as, back. as we thought, a familiar name returns to the lineup. Willie Puckett. <laughs> yes, he, he got a dozen. <laughs> he got a wake-up call last Friday night. I, I keep and, telling uh, you, Joe, I keep telling you, Joe, the, the road to the regional championship goes through Roosevelt and East Chicago. How many years have I told you that? How many years? Well, How we'll many see. times? We'll see if the road <laughs> goes that way this year. Let's move on to some action from Friday night when uh, 
Mike Urban's Highland Trojans were in St. John to take on LC. Here come those Trojans, Justin Tauber, all the way to the glass for two. Now, wait, there must be something wrong. Every time I pick up the paper, Highland's winning again. Now, what's going on? <laughs> That's Phil Voynich from deep out of the left corner. Down the lane comes LC behind Mike Verbe for the goal. You know, it's Watch uh, Jason Milligan with that turnaround off the glass. Highland Bench loving it. And they'll love this as well. Nice dish to the goal. <laughs> they have not been overwhelmed with athletic success, so th that's a big victory for them over Lake Central, a team they don't beat very often. You know, it's been more than a decade since Highland has won more than 12 games. Right now, they, are, they stand 8-2. and two. Mike Urban's got some talent out there. He'll be along to tell us about his ball club, and they are 8-2. and two. You know, they won a sectional when they virtually had to... 5'7", 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", 5'11". Yeah, they had, a, they had a team with nobody taller than six foot one year. Uh, one year they won nine games all year, but six of them were in the league and they won the league championship. Uh, they're looking good in the Lake 10 right yeah, now. Very good. All righty, let's move on and check out some action. Lake Station in Munster, or no, we've got, uh, yeah, we should have, this is Nolan Mishawaka. There's the jumper for deep for Noel. No one out to Mishawaka after beating Andrain. They went out there on Saturday. Now, Mishawaka is, is rarely a basketball powerhouse, but their gym is a tough place to win. They're one in 10, though, Mark. And they, uh, the Warriors here struggled a little with them. There's a nice shot by Bajda on the layup, and where's the foul? There, he got hammered. <laughs> and here's uh, Brian Lukic inside with a pass to the man, Monty Gordon. Just a sophomore, folks is Monty Gordon. He had 17 on Friday night. Two wins over the and, weekend. Uh, 46-43 for Noel. As they defeated Mishawaka. Flying high. Flying high. Heading into the big league game against the Morton Governors this week. We're going to go back to, I think, some Friday night action coming up. Munster's Milos Puyo. Now second in the state second in the scoring. State in scoring. 29 points a game. Is that unbelievable? That is. It but really when he had 50 in one game, that helps. <laughs> that helps well, you last night, it. last Friday night, he had 33 as he goes to the goal right there. You know, the yeah. lighting looks a little bad in Munster this year, though. Well, I, I just think Milos's brilliance <laughs> has affected the camera. It's right. gloom and doom That's for right. the other team. That's right. right. <laughs> and he just shoots the lights out, so to speak. <laughs> That's a Wendell Height. Height's going to come back with a nice move here. Boy, harness nice that player. move. And But it's all Munster. More Milosh to the glass there. The actual move. Nice catch. And Rodney Bosnich going to line her up and pop the three for the Mustangs. And they were all over Lake Station. 77-45 on Friday night. Milosh, 30. Three points, 29.4 is his average, and that's just uh, about three and a half off the state leader. He's right there. He's right. He's a couple, of good, one bad game couple, away from that guy. Couple, another couple of those 50 games. <laughs> that's right. Pulling those Jordans sure, out of his back pocket. Right. 50 point games. All righty, let's move back. I believe we're looking at Morton and Ann Gray in here from Saturday night. Nice feed there. This was a points. situation. I mean, it, let's Eric Cole. I, I think Munster knew coming into this game that this was probably the biggest test of the year. That Andrean had played a much, much tougher schedule, and uh, it kind of showed. I think. Watch the great game. tip here for Morton's Andrew Hall. Missed shot, but he tips it up and in for the Governors. This one closer than the final score as well. Look where Carson shoots this ball. Oh hey my. Carson, just back out the mid court. What was that from? <laughs> a poor man's <laughs> Bryce Drew. <laughs> he's uh, Carson he's much more than the poor man's Bryce Drew, I think, anymore. He's getting to be uh, the middle income, Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce Drew. The middle class. The middle class, Bryce Drew. <laughs> no, I don't know if we want to get into that. But he had 18 points as <laughs> they upset Morton. Actually, again, because of the, the power of the schedule, I don't, I don't think it was really an upset. But it was Morton's first loss of the year, and certainly, you know, no, nothing to be ashamed about a Morton 8-1. and one. No. Uh, played a very tough team, and they got beat. And now they get a chance to come back On the road against, against, uh, and against Drain, uh, uh, And Drain is a very, very difficult place to play, uh, especially with that frenzied, yeah. fired-up crowd. All right, let's check out the uh, Merrillville roosevelt score. This was kind of a, well, this is KV and Lowell we're looking at here. As, uh, or excuse me, Valparaiso and KV. Valpo quietly is having a great season. You got to give Coach Bob Punter a lot of credit because people said he didn't have beans coming back. 
And now yeah. they're seven and two in the year. It was Pete Durant doing very well. Jay right there. In fact, they're better than seven and two. I believe they are. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, seven, eight and two. It was Professor. Kyle Martin on the shot. I'll get it straight. Seven and three. I'll get it straight. Give, give me four or five chances. I'll get Shane right. Wieschen for Valparaiso. And uh, here's the man. We're going to see him here, Mark. You'll see him tomorrow on 56. Golly. The Big Mac, Mike Makarowski. <laughs> you want to talk about blue collar? Goes after those <laughs> rebounds. He is the man. Watch him tomorrow. He's making his 56 debut. The Big Mac, 70 to 54 for Valpo over KV. 16 to nothing run in the first quarter, put that game away. And again, uh, Valpo went to the state finals, obviously. 28 and 1 last year, 7 and 3 this season, uh, despite the fact that really David Furlan is really the only returning regular player that they had. A uh, great coaching job by Bob Pony. You guys give him credit. Okay, let's move on to the girls' basketball. We'll first check out the Maryville Roosevelt score from Saturday night. Of course, without Joe Stavitsky, the Pirates uh, lost in triple overtime and a great performance by Roosevelt and especially their guard William Fauntleroy. A lot of people thought Maryville would go 20 and 0. Uh, Roosevelt had played some good ball, but they played some bad games and Roosevelt then bounced back off that to lose the West Side. Yeah. That might be Roosevelt's biggest regular season victory in, you know, 25, 30 years when you consider that they beat the number one team in the state, a team of people thought they had no chance to beat. You know, let's be, let, let's be honest, I don't think there were any radio stations there. I don't think there were any newspapers there because nobody figured it was uh, going to be a, a contest. And Roosevelt, I don't know if they can play that well consistently. And obviously when they came That's in the next the night, they yeah. lost the West Side. Yeah. But for one night, they had a supreme effort. They caught Maribel down a little. They only shot about 32% and, and they knocked them off. And so this uh, coach Ron Heflin said, might be the best thing to happen to Maribel, take a little pressure off them. William Fowler has the ability to play that well at night in and not out, but uh, they just haven't been able to put it together consistently. But losing to Westside by three, that's no nothing to be ashamed really, of. You know, really. Really. We don't know for sure that Westside isn't that outstanding a team because Westside sure. is eight and one. They have really great talent as well. I'm not sure about their guards, though, this season, yeah. but uh, they've got great talent in the front court, no doubt about that. Let's check the girls' some. basketball from this week past. This is Valparaiso and Chesterton. The Carol we Potts go there on the turnaround. Kerry Brown down the lane off the glass for two. Aaron Parker headed to Marquette, right? Six foot three center. Now from deep, Christy Cleveland from way out there brought him to their feet. But it was the Lady Vikings who would prevail as Parker scores again off the glass. 55-51 for VHS as they knocked off their big rival, the Chesterton Lady Trojans. Valpo, uh, 12 and 1 now. They are number 4 in the state, and Chesterton number 10. Uh, they did not drop very far because of this loss, again, losing to a top 10 team. And Valpo, again, isn't, you know, it sounds like I'm, you know, I've, I've got a green undershirt here, but Valpo, another great coaching job by, by Mr. Kirby out there, because again, they, they were supposed to have a good team, but not really a great team this year, and they're in the top 5 in the whole state with only one loss to number 1 East Chicago. Yeah, well, East Chicago doesn't play anybody, though. Well, they don't. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just see, I didn't say they don't play anybody. The correct statement I made, which was misconstrued by uh, uh, the big guy, was that compared to Lake Central, okay. East Chicago hasn't played anybody. I okay. think that's fair. When they shut down Stephanie White, who instantly scored 66 points a state record Monday night. It's Pote on Kai. When they go and beat two top 10 teams in the same day, like Lake Central did, then I'll be impressed. Whether okay. they're on TV or not. <laughs> whether they get to be on U.S. Cable or whether they get to be on JLB or you know, not. You know, funny you should say that there's Melissa Downtown Brown from North Judson. <laughs> the Lady Jays, Mark, making their debut on Round Ball Review. Just can't beat them. Against KV last Thursday night. The only team no. to beat KV. Look at Melissa. You got a garter out there. Believe me, you got a garter out there. The girl had a hand in her face. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they throw it in, throw it out. She lines no it up way. for three again. <laughs> Six that. out of nine from three-point range. A school record last Thursday night. Well, She's now she open is, again. She isn't Come on. Let's face it. She isn't guarded. Oh, and the foul. And the foul. And the foul. The four-point play. <laughs> Melissa says, ring it up. And the foul. <laughs> Ref, give me the foul. <laughs> <laughs> and they win by nine. Kankakee Valley's only loss this year. 55-46 uh, for the North Judson Lady Jays. We'll move on to Monday night action in girls basketball. Boone Grove and uh, Hebron. This is Tanya Shum with the rebound basket. 
Here's Carrie Sliwa for the Lady Wolves with a dish to Mary Lurie for the two. On the run, fast break, and the five. And then we're going to see Chris Sutcliffe of the Lady Wolf down the lane. They went on to win this one 42-38 over your Lady Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> My Lady Hawks. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Boone Grove's been strong. All right, now, years. are you ready Boone for Grove, this? Boone Grove, Hanover Central. A lot of, lot Prepare of yourself. Doing well. Rare, rare, very rare. Rare is the day goes on footage of the East Chicago Lady Cardinals. You won't see this in her. Well, yeah, because you, you know, can't see this anywhere else. You don't see them on TV anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's going on in that story. But you know, talk about uh, something I don't Here's get. Nicole I don't understand. Reyes, the freshman, knocking down the jumper. And uh, inside they go to Tennille. Yeah, we snuck this hey, camera in there, folks. <laughs> Believe me, you won't be seeing this. You won't be seeing any highlights of that Lake Central East Chicago game anywhere. Yeah, I guess you won't. I Here's guess you Monica won't. again off the jam. And, and, you know, in that situation, I don't know the inside of it, but please, to cut a deal. Both sides, cut a deal. This game should be on TV. It's going to be a sellout. Cut a deal, please. 63-33 for the Lady Cards. Knocked out the ninth. Rated team, Chesterton, I mean, looking by great. 20. Looking great, uh, although I hear Valparaiso's playing Marshall. He's got one, one, 18 city titles in a row. Well, who's, the, who's the Chicago playing? They're playing Resurrection over the weekend. Resurrection, 13th huh? in the state of Illinois, okay, I think. Well, yeah, I'm, sure they're much, I'm sure they're much better than that Marshall team. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding you, Chicago girls. The, the idea is, uh, you know, nobody is unbeatable. And that, I think sometimes you win a few games in a row and you get that idea that you're unbeatable. Remember, we all thought that Maribel might as well just phone in the last 10 because it's all over. <laughs> well, that's true. Every, everybody can be defeated. So if East Chicago, I mean, and it's, it's a huge achievement to win all of your regular season games. I think that's overlooked a lot. I mean, even state, the great Roosevelt team with Glenn Robinson didn't win all the regular season games. The Lake Central state champs last year, girls stat, girls champs, sure. didn't win Boston all the regular season champ. games. You're it's right. a huge accomplishment just to, to win, win those last six or so. Well, they've got some big games coming up. They've, they've, they've got some testers on the schedule. Sure. Just because they don't play as tough a schedule as like and Central, you and I, so we shouldn't get down on them. You and I won't see any of that because <laughs> no, it's next no, Thursday won't. night. <laughs> no, we won't. All right. And apparently a lot of no, other people won't see it either. either. Okay. Okay. Say. Let's check those picks out from last week. Well, uh, off to a slow start, I must admit. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Urban's going to chastise me severely for picking uh, Lake Central to win by three when Highland won by well, three. We started out 0 for 5, I think. I like Dan Tran, <laughs> liked Valpo. What's going on? Hanover Central let me down. Hawks couldn't do it. My man Vince Rosado upsets the Hawks there. What's happening there? Uh, six lost picks. I mean, what can I say? And of course, I like the, Seven. Rest, like the rest of the organized world picked uh, Maryville over Roosevelt. But then I came you back to the last started off 0 for 7, yeah, a little Warsaw, slow no, start. No, 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 0 for 6, 0 for 6, 0 for 6. <laughs> okay. ten, 10 picks. Then Warsaw, uh, Judson in the, uh, winning Friday night, Merrillville over Hobart and Andran to beat Morton, which was a pretty good pick. 4 and 6, I'll have it up to 70% by next week, Joe. You closed Justin. good, closed good there, the last four you got. <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of decent ones, you know. I, well, I'll tell you what, no, that's just not my standards. You know, four, four yeah, out of ten. That is a weak start. Four out of ten, I, I just do not feel is a was significant picking. It just was not, it just was not good enough to, uh, to get the job done. It was we good. are ready for this week past. Are you ready, sir? Yeah, that's the question. Is whether I'm ready <laughs> I don't for this know whether you are. Well, <laughs> why don't you just go ahead and set it up anyway? It was right. Griffith and Crown Point. Griffith and Crown Point, I'll tell you what. It, I think Griffith was 12 and 10 that year, two years ago, and Highland, uh, Crown Point, I mean, was 10 and 10. And the difference between 500 and winning in a winning season was the difference. Uh, this game was the difference. There's uh, Griffith coach Ron Diviak, Christina's dad, and coach Mike Urban. But you'll see the pass down the, uh, Mike Urban, Rich Severe of Crown Point. Boy, you need a script. <laughs> the pass down the lane to Troy Dawson. He lays it up, and Griffith beats Crown Point. Two years ago this week. Round Ball Review is partially underwritten by the following. The staff of expert professionals at Pace Center Auto Parts provides attentive personal service and quality auto parts and accessories at reasonable, everyday low prices. Well known in Northwest Indiana as original equipment suppliers, Pace Center also features a complete line of body shop supplies and a fully equipped machine shop. Pace Center Auto Parts, 6635 Broadway in Merrillville and in Chesterton. Specializing in sports medicine, the Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic continues their strong support of local athletes. Each Saturday morning, local athletes are invited to attend a sports injury assessment clinic from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic, 2501 Cumberland Drive in Valparaiso. 
This program is made possible in part by the following good neighbor State Farm agents for your car, home, life, and health insurance needs. Michelle Brown, 601 North Main in Crown Point, 663-6219. Don Gray, 2002 West 81st in Merrillville, 769-9120. And David Lamar, 3290 Grant and Gary, 884-8800. Horizon Graphic Apparel, a design and custom embroidery company reproduces team, club, or company names and logos on shirts, hats, and jackets. Our in-house design department can meet your individual needs for all types of apparel and accessory items. Computer designed for exact detail. Horizon Graphic Apparel and Custom Embroidery, 1752 East Porter and Crown Point. 6634427 and by the financial support of viewers like you we're back on round ball review ready to check our most valuable players but before we do that we'll look at our conference standings for the second week of round ball review and your favorite part of the show when you get to gaze <laughs> at those conference standings well, and they're already difficult to decipher because some teams play teams in games that are conference games and they that's play right play them twice and one's a conference and yeah. one Valpo, Valpo and Chester Valpo and Chester exactly. split two games but only one was a league game and you see Chester in it 2-0 and Merrillville and Portage and the Merrillville Portage game uh, uh, Portage saying hey don't don't write us off totally yet. We still have a shot at Merrillville and we'd like to play the game before you yeah, write you us got off. Got spanked by Hammond Saturday night. Merrillville though. nine and one. And uh, again, some struggling teams in the Dooland this year, Holbert and Laporte. Lake 10 Conference. Uh, Morton right up at the top. Morton and Noel play Friday night. It's going to be a biggie. And of course, uh, Highland says, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Don't write us off just yet. We're 2-1. and one. Calumet's still there. Hammond High has played well. And actually, this is a pretty good year in the Lake 10 Conference. Yes, it is. In the Northwestern, we're still searching for those conference standings. We do know Westside is 2-0. and it's a, it's a big year in Gary. Uh, man, I believe is 3-5. and five, I'm not sure. But the other four teams could legitimately re be rated in the top 50 in the state. Uh, Roosevelt, uh, might, that might be debatable. But certainly Wirt, Wallace, and Westside are among the top 30. And they've all had great years. And some of their losses are to each other. Westside Cougars at the top right now. But there's no guarantee that they're the best. In the Northwest Hoosier Conference, North Judson, KV tied at 1-0. And again, uh, going to need a challenger to North Judson here. Uh, they look real strong, whereas everybody else, there's question marks. Uh, River Forest having one of their best seasons in a while. A couple of wins on the weekend. Yes, they have. But North Judson, uh, definitely a class on the Northwest Hoosier Conference right now. Okay, we'll check out the PCC. They are drawing those pairings for next week's tournament tonight. And a big year in the PCC, even though the big dog, the Hebron Hawks, are down a little, five and five. But look at Hanover Central. Uh, Wheelers, pl Wheelers playing good. Couts still the quietest unbe unbeaten team in uh, in probably the whole state. And uh, Boone Grove with uh, only six wins in 11 games, but three of them in the league. Wheeler with a couple of wins last week. There's the Independence with Andrean six and three. Chicago six and four. Lake Central five and four, and South Central three and five. And our others return tonight. Oh, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> North White got on the board Saturday night. That's right. There you they go. were 0 they got a 7. Win. Elston struggled a little. Good year for Marquette, though. And a, a very good year for New Prairie so far. Six the and Prairie 6 and 2 with a win over LaPorte. Yeah. They don't get that very often. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. There are the others. Okay, we are set for our most valuable players. We'll start off with the boys. Three different names from last week. Three guys doing the job. We saw yes. one of them. Hey, you knocked down a midcourt shot. You got to be one of the players of the week, Come especially on. if it's on TV. <laughs> yeah, no. especially if you do it in front of the TV camera. Yeah, it's there's, a, there's additional pressure there. <laughs> there, right? there are there are additional <laughs> style points for doing it on television, which means that none of the Lake Central and East Chicago girls will probably be picked next week. Uh, that's the, we keep we keep referring to that, and that's neither here nor there. Anyway, right. <laughs> North Hudson with Shannon Brown uh, coming on very strong, six foot six senior, and one of the leaders on um, one of the top teams in the area. Munster's Milaj Puyo, Big 33 time points. Big-time scorer and, and a rebounder. Folks say, all Milaj can do is score and rebound. Milaj says, well, that's right. <laughs> that's all I do. I do it, and I do it well. 33 points and 14 rebounds against Lake Station. Uh, Milaj, 6'6", six, six, senior, has uh, been on the varsity, I think, three years. Munster and is doing Had the injury with the back, job. I think, last year, but it's come back. And, he's and outstanding William job. Fontleroy. William Fauntleroy off a one-game performance uh, when Roosevelt rose above uh, the level that they played all year and, uh, and smacked down Mighty Merrillville. 9 of 11 from the field, 5 of 6 from the foul line. And as the guard, he handled the ball. Uh, 24 points as they beat number one Merrillville. I think that's Ro as regular season wins. Obviously, Roosevelt's state championship win over Bray Buff 
when Glenn Robinson was there is probably their biggest win of all time. But this probably is their biggest regular season win, certainly since Coach Heflin has been coach, I would think. And William Fauntleroy. On the girls' um, side? I think she deserves to be one of the players of the week, as does Christina Diviak. She had an outstanding week uh, with big wins over Highland and Rogers. 30 points, 5 rebounds, 5 steals. And uh, the one loss, the, the, you know, the loss to Seeger, uh, uh, they're probably looking forward to uh, the chance to get back on well, another ranked team. To, Coach to Kirby would up. want to remind you that they lost to Valparaiso as well. well yeah, they did lose to Valparaiso. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I don't know. But, yeah, but although in both of those games, Lake Central had a significant lead and, and let the lead get away, and, uh, mm. which has been the way they've lost in any of their games the last three seasons. Sabrina Harris from Calumet, uh, she's played on the varsity since she, since she was a freshman. Now 6'1", junior, 22 points, 20 rebounds against Elkhart Central. Oh, my. And Calumet, who I think had won very few girls games at all in the last five years, or any before Sabrina got there, and now they've come on very, very strong, and they're, uh, I think they have a winning record right now. And Melissa Schoenfeld of Kankakee Valley, they are 12-1, and 18 points, 10 rebounds against Andrean, even in the loss to North Judson, she had 15 points. And we hope to hear from her coach, Frank Ginzer, here later on in the program. All right, we've got the head coach, of the Highland Trojans joining us, Coach Mike Urban, his ball club playing very, very well this year. A couple of wins on the weekend, Coach. Eight and two, and uh, God, it's got to be a great turnaround since a few years ago when you, you know, it was a little lean there talent-wise, but you've got some outstanding uh, guards. I know that you're happy. They're both juniors as well, as in Vonich and uh, Justin Tauber. I know you're real excited about those two right off the bat. Well, those two kids are, are definitely been a key to our ball club right now. Uh, uh, we played them last year. They led it as sophomores, and uh, uh, they're handling the ball for us and putting some pressure on the outside. And uh, you know, we're, we're happy to be where we're at right now, but no, we got a lot of work to do to get better. And the big guy, of course, Sasha Vukas, had a nice game uh, battling against Kevin Skirka last Friday night, and uh, he's done a good job. Uh, Sasha really stepped forward for us last Friday night. Uh, he had 12 points in the first quarter, and uh, it's the third year he's been on the varsity with us, and, and we we're, we're beginning to expect that from him. And uh, like I said, he really stepped up, and, and we rode him the first quarter down there at Lake Central. Analyze uh, Sasha's game for us. What are his strengths, maybe his, his uh, weaknesses in his game? Well, I think um, one of the things with Sasha is that you have to get him to stay on the block. Uh, you know, he's, he's 6'4", he's 250 pounds, and when he spreads out, he, he becomes a big target and a tough person to get around. Uh, he's also probably one of our better outside shooters. Uh, but. Uh, we just feel right now that he can do more for us down uh, around the basket, uh, and he's done that for us. Uh, weakness, uh, we're probably never satisfied with his defense, but truly this year uh, he's worked harder than he ever has uh, in trying to play defense. Okay. You know, you've, you, you've had some, some seasons where you've been around 500 in recent years, but uh, now 8-2 now and two start, uh, a significant chance for, you know, perhaps a big winning season, the kind of which Highland hasn't really had in very many years. I mean, is that, is that prospect exciting for you? You're just saying, well, we're just getting ready for the state playoffs. Well, sure, it's exciting. Uh, you know, when, when you start to win, the kids' confidence goes up and everybody feels good about themselves. And uh, we knew those years were coming and, and it was tough to get through. And uh, fortunately, people stayed with us and showed the confidence in us. And, um, you know, we've, we've got great kids now. We've always had good kids at Highland. Uh, these kids just have a little bit more ability than, than what the other ones have had. and um, They make us better coaches and, and they make us a, a better team. Talk about that Lake 10 uh, conference battle. Uh, we saw Morton, Knoll, unbeaten. You guys at 2-1. and one. Uh, Just impressed with the way Knoll's kids play together. Had a big win at home over Andrean. Uh, Morton's had a great start, but they you know ran into the buzzsaw Saturday night there. So that should be a big time battle tomorrow night. It should be an outstanding game. Um, I think uh, Bishop Knoll right now is playing extremely well. Uh, they're very sound defensively, and Coach Taylor does a super job with the kids. Uh, Hammond Morton's for real. Uh, they have uh, very good quickness at the guard position, and their inside people uh, uh, give them enough inside threat, and they have the ability to take the ball outside. It should be a super ball game. You check out some of the action in your win last Friday night uh, against uh, LC. I'm sure you owe Coach Futnoff a few of those. He's uh, had some success against you guys in the last few years, but you'll take that. A lot of uh, fired up uh, Trojans on the bench there as well. Well, anytime Highland plays Lake Central, it's a hard fought game. And as you can see, there was a nice crowd there, a lot of emotion. And uh, we were very pleased with the way our kids played. And uh, Lake Central made two outstanding runs at us. And uh, we were able to answer those charges and, and be able to come out on That's top. That's big too, Coach, on the road. As I did, you know, as I was watching some of this, these highlights, you guys were controlling the first uh, maybe two and a half, three quarters of this ball game. I mean, you had a, a 10 or point lead uh, 
for most of the time. And uh, to be able to withstand a big run like that on someone's uh, home floor in a hostile environment with young, with you know a couple of junior guards, it's got to be a big lift. Well, it is, and you know we talked uh, all week long about having to go on the road and and play in two very difficult places to play. Uh, Lake Central is always tough to play, and then to go back the next night after an emotional game and go to Hobart and, and play in another difficult place and, and be able to come out on top. And uh, I think people understand it. They look to see that you know the Hobart score was only five points, but it was a hard-fought game, and uh, you know they had a tough ball game night four, came back, played extremely well, and and we went over there that night and uh, got in early foul trouble and. The greatest thing about that game that night was that our bench stepped forward. We had kids that, that really came off the bench, contributed for us. Terry McDonald came off the bench, scored 14 points. And a couple of the kids we even put in positions that, that they weren't, haven't played there all year long. And uh, this night they stepped forward and really did a nice job for us. That's a great two wins for wanting to, you know, build for a sectional when you're going to have to play in a hostile environment as well. Coach, you've always been one of the schools that hasn't had much size. You're always forever, you're forever playing teams that are bigger and, you know, perhaps better jumpers, perhaps faster. Is there a key to playing against teams like that? Because you've always had some success. I mean, you've had some wins over Lake Central, the kind of which that nobody else has had. They've always pretty much had bigger players than you, and this year was no exception. Is there a key to playing against people who are bigger? I mean, what do you what do you tell what do you tell boys? What do you say? Well, first of all, you, you have to. You can only control with what you have. Uh, you can make up for lack of size sometimes if kids have a lot of heart and also willing to put their body on people and keep them away from baskets. And uh, we had to get an awful lot of uh, weak side help when, when we played people that, that were bigger than us. And uh, you just got to scrap and, and play a little bit harder. And, and those groups that we had in the past, uh, you know, we were always proud of that. Maybe it didn't work out for wins, but they came after you and they did the little things right. All righty, Coach, thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for joining us on Round Ball Review, and good luck. No problem. Thanks for having us out. Okay, Mike Urban, the head coach of the Highland Trojans. We thank him for joining us. And I believe we're going to go to a timeout. And as we go to this break, we will show you the top 20 in the boys and girls poll. Uh, it's changed a little bit. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Just a shade. It's Except changed. On that girls' side, that number one oh, team. That one has I, that's familiar. That's a familiar <laughs> team. I know where that team plays. Of course, yeah, you'll see more highlights on this show than you will in <laughs> some other places. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Come on, y'all, let's take a ride. Don't you say a word, just get inside. It's time to take your on another kind of trip. Because you can't have to hop if you don't have to hit. Everybody kick it, kick it, kick it, get out the ticket. Ain't no blood, ain't no pippin', ain't no fools in the party set trippin'. Everybody got a stack and it ain't no crap. And it really don't matter if you're white or black. I wanna take it there like the staple singers. Put something in the tank and I know that I can bring it. If you can't take the heat, get your ass out the kitchen. We on a mission. Round Ball Review is partially underwritten by the following. Hillbrick, Cunningham, and Schwerd, serving Lake and Porter counties for over 40 years. Available for personal injury, trials and appeals, family law, trusts, and estates. When legal advice is needed, experience, expertise, and personal attention are essential. Because in this profession, without personal care, it's just another business. Crown Point Orthodontics, Dr. Goodwin and Coach Reggie Tisdale invite you to follow the 95 Region Force basketball team this summer as they compete for scholarship opportunities for Northwest Indiana athletes through national exposure. Also, don't forget the Great Lakes Invitational Tournament for 12, 13, and 14-year-old boys and girls sponsored by Block Junior High School. For information, call 392-1586. Want to find out about local prep sports? Ask a Times reader. The Times award-winning sports team brings you more prep sports than any other area newspaper every day. For Times Home Delivery, 1-800-589-3331. The Times, Lake County's largest newspaper. Vail's office furniture outlet has moved to 7300 Broadway in Merrillville, previously Ace Hardware. Vail's has a 13,000 square foot showroom with pre-owned and new office furniture. Vail's office furniture, now located at 73rd and Broadway in Merrillville, 769-2468. And by the financial support of viewers like you. We're back on Round Ball Review, ready to check in with the head coach of the KV Lady Cougars, Coach Frank Ginzer, joining us from down in Wheatfield, and you're in with a win tonight, huh, Coach? Yeah, we, uh, we're able to pull out a victory over River Forest tonight. 
Now 13 and one, if was that correct? Yeah, we're 13 and one now. And three and one in the conference. And uh, earlier win this week over Lowell and a win over River Forest. Uh, the only blemish last Thursday against uh, North Judson. Your team has had an outstanding year to this point. Yes, we have. We, uh, you know, uh, faltered a little bit against Judson. There was a stretch there where they uh, they hit a couple threes. Of course, Melissa Brown. You know, I think we saw those highlights a little bit ago and. She hit some threes, and we didn't score, and, and uh, then uh, it ended up being a six-point ball game. Hey, Coach, we're supposed to be tuned in that early. I thought you guys would be still playing. <laughs> well, we got we got over a little early. Uh, you didn't want to watch those three-pointers again, did no, you? No, I didn't really want to see it. When I got home and turned that on, I didn't want to see that. <laughs> All right, tell us about the game tonight. You, of course, have a young lady that's already signed to play uh, Division One basketball at Cincinnati, Melissa Schoonveld. And, uh, She's had an outstanding year as well. Yes, she has. Uh, she's a four-year starter for us. And by the way, her, her last name is spelled S-C-H-O-O-N-V-E-L-D. Yeah, right. It is. You guys have a little trouble with those, those uh, <laughs> KV names. I know that. And, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's 39 points now away from 1,000 points. Wow. And uh, she's within range of our career rebounding record. Uh, uh, she's broken just, you know, just about everything that uh, we, we've asked her to do. She's stepped up and done it. But... We've got a lot of other girls that uh, have, have contributed a lot. Uh, we have a senior, uh, Carrie Myers, who's a three-year starter. She's with, it, within range of our assist and, steal, and steals record. And uh, tonight we had an excellent performance from our 5'11 uh, senior center, uh, Rachel Knipp. She had 20 points and 22 rebounds, and that comes off of a 17-point, uh, nine-rebound game against Lowell on, on Tuesday night. So she, Rachel had an excellent week this week. When are you back in action now, Coach, after your win tonight? Uh, we go to South Newton on Tuesday night, and that's a pretty good bus trip for us. So uh, we're going to you know, come in practice tomorrow, Saturday, and, and Monday, and then go back down there on Tuesday. We play Tuesday, Thursdays, the rest of the season until the sectional. Okay. Coach, I was just wondering, you know, a lot of teams took their first loss of the year last week, and you took one against North Judson. Uh, what was it like coming off of that? You came off two days later and beat Andrean, and now you win again tonight. Uh, how did the team react to the first loss of the year? Because several teams had to go through that in this last week. I thought we reacted very well. We're, we're a senior-dominated squad. We have seven seniors. We start five of them. Uh, uh, you know, the kids have been around for a while. Uh, North Justin's a quality uh, team, a quality program, and it was a six-point ball game, but it was actually closer than that. So it wasn't a loss like we got blown out or anything. It wasn't that we lost any respect. We came out against Andrean on Saturday, and we were just a little bit sluggish. It was a 12 o'clock game, and, and sometimes it's hard to play those games. Uh, we came out tonight against River Forest, and uh, River Forest's program has really uh, stepped up a notch. And uh, they had us actually at halftime, uh, 32 to 26. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came out the second half, and that's what we've been able to do the last two games. Uh, we want to try to get away from that. We want to come out the first half, uh, and that's what we're going to try to get and impressed to them on, in practice this week. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us tonight, and congratulations on your great season at this point. Well, we, we appreciate the opportunity to be on and, and uh, promote our program. And, and uh, if you guys ever want to, uh, or anybody else in, in the area wants to come down and do one of our games, uh, I'm sure uh, we'll let you do it. There'll be no <laughs> problems here. No problem with that. You say that the welcome mat is out, huh? Yep. All right. right. Thanks, Coach. Frank Ginzer, the head coach of the KV Lady Cougars. He's in with a win over River Forest tonight. We have the head coach of the Crown Point Bulldogs now joining us, Coach Rich Severa. Thanks for coming out tonight, Coach, and being patient. Uh, a little rebuilding job for you as well this season. You lost uh, some star-studded players, a lot of them over to Purdue Cal. You only have to go to Hammond to see some of them, but uh, lost Point a lot North. of talent last year. And, uh, you're trying to throw together a squad again after losing some great kids. Yeah, yeah it was. It was a, an outstanding season, and I think the, the kids that we have this year have kind of played off of that a little bit. And, uh, you know, we're five and three right now, and I think we could have possibly won another game here or there, but, you know, we might have lost another game somewhere around the, the same token. But the kids have played well. They've, they've scrapped. They've worked uh, very hard. It's a nice group of kids. Uh, you know, and, and we're just we're very pleased with where we're at right now. Two-point win over Laporte uh, on Friday night. Tell us about that game. You know, it was uh, a game where, you know, we were in control in the first half. We had about a 10-point lead with 37 seconds to go in the half. And uh, we ended up uh, taking a shot uh, right before the half, and we missed it. Uh, they happened to turn the ball over, and we got it back, and we didn't get it inbounded uh, for some reason. That's probably the first time all year that we didn't get the ball inbounded on an, an out-of-bounds play. And then they drove the length of the floor and scored at the buzzer, and we kind of were on our heels from that point on. Uh, particularly offensively. In the first half, we played very well offensively. But it was a very good defensive job. 
uh, you know, played a defensive battle by both teams, you know, by the number of points scored. But I was very pleased with the defensive effort and the composure down the stretch on the road in a conference game. And, you know, we've won three very close ball games right now, and that's a credit to the kids that they've kept their composure in tight situations to, to come back and get a key steal and a basket or just to hang on, you know, with the lead. I know shooting percentage was something as a team that was bothering you earlier in the year. Has, has that started to improve? You know what? It has. And uh, it's just kind of a confidence factor. We started off very well in our first two or three games. Uh, and then we had a little bit of a lull where we didn't shoot it real well. Uh, and then the last couple of ball games, it's been a little bit better. I, I thought that, you know, I think Coach Swanson said it last week against Valparaiso. You know, he looked at the stats and saw that they were the, the worst shooting three-point team in Northwest Indiana. But I think that way, too, that, that we, you know, have the potential to be a very good shooting uh, team from outside, particularly three-point range. It's not quite where we like it. It's right around 31, 32. But, you know, we'd like to get it up 38, 39, 40 percent. Our two-point average is very good. You know, we're pushing 48, 49 percent. Oh, and we'll good. take that right now. So it's the threes. I think it's just kind of a you know, when we need to shoot them yeah. and when we don't need got to, to right now. Got a little used to having some guys that could bang that shot last year. It is, you know, we're, the, <laughs> we're a perimeter-oriented team. You know, you're talking about Mike, you know, we, we're not very big either. You know, we've got Jim McCall inside at six foot four, and he's done a nice job. And, you know, we, we get tested every week, too. And we've already played uh, uh, Mr. Puyo from Munster. And I thought, you know, defensively, we did an excellent job against him. Uh, you know, we held him to 15 points and give That's them great. credit. Yeah. Uh, they, they came up with some players that contributed to, to beat us that night, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, we're very pleased with what we're doing. And, you know, if we can get it inside a little bit more and keep them honest, I think that'll help our outside shooting a little bit. We've really stressed we need to go inside, then outside, not outside, then inside. You've got Rogers coming up on Friday in a league game. And then kind of a tough stretch, to tell the truth yeah. now. Maraville, uh, Valparaiso, yeah. East Chicago. I, mean, I need to find the athletic director to put that schedule together. You know, Maraville on Friday night and East Chicago you the know, next I know night. Him. <laughs> yeah, we know him pretty uh, well. Uh, I mean, how, how, do you, how do you get your, your kids in the mindset for, for a schedule against, you know, much bigger people, much quicker people? Well, you know, we uh, talk about that. You know, we, we don't back down. You know, the, the conference schedule, of course, you know, is going to be competitive year in and year out. And our non-conference schedule is very good. And, you know, you just you have to stay focused. And Michigan City Rogers is much improved over yeah, what they were yeah, last year. Sure they, have, they have three young men uh, that play the perimeter that are very quick. And I told the kids tonight, too, that this may be the quickest team we've played up to this point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, records are deceiving. You know, it, it, it's going to be a dogfight every night in the conference. So, you know, we, we approach it that way. You know, we have to do the things not only that we need to do to be successful, but at the same time try to eliminate and stop some of the things that they want to do to be successful also. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for coming out tonight, and good luck the remainder of the season. And uh, hopefully that Maryville East Chicago back-to-back -back won't be too rough on you. Well, you know, I'm sure the kids will be looking forward to it. And I know we are, too. You know, it, it, those are fun weekends. Did you guys want, to be, want Maryville to be number one when you faced them? Well, you yeah, know what? I, I think as everybody else, I think we had anticipated them being number yeah. one. You know, last that, year. That's such a huge rivalry you have. It is. Know? It's a very good rivalry, and, you know, a lot of times you can kind of throw out the record book. And, you know, we're going to go over there and play, and we're going to give it our best shot. You know, last year we had to go over to play Valpo as number one. And, that's right. You know, that's in right. our uh, Doonlin inauguration, so <laughs> why not go over and play Maryville as number one? They're breaking one? you right. So maybe a couple people will lose this week, and Maryville will go back up to number one. We'll get another yeah. shot in them. There will be a game on Channel 56 tomorrow night, and as we go to this timeout, we will show you. The TV and radio games in Northwest Indiana tomorrow night. Want to see Channel 56's Joe Arredondo and Mark Smith go two-on-two two with administration or faculty from your favorite high school? Just think. Arredondo dribbles left. Ball fakes your faculty member, then drives baseline. Boo! He's hacked by your athletic director. Pass in from Mark Smith over your faculty member's head to Arredondo, to Smith. Up for the shot, and... Want to see your high school take on the Channel 56 sports guys? Tune into Round Ball Review this Thursday night at 9 p.m. to find out how.
How did we get lassoed into that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I heard that was your idea. Embar <laughs> em kids, embarrassment is good for the soul. Okay, let's tell you about this. The next two weeks we'll be pledging here on Channel 56 during Round Ball Review. Next Thursday at 9, and then the Thursday after mm -hmm. that on the 26th at 8.30. Uh, your pledge could mean that Mark and I will be playing two-on-two -two at your local school. If your school has the largest dollar amount of paid pledges, Oh which has goodness. to be over four. That's our only hope. Over four hundred dollars. <laughs> that's could, our only hope. Four hundred. That that could bail us out. You will win the right to host the fifty six WYN two on two challenge in your gym. We will try to schedule this event with your athletic director for some time in the last half of February. All money must be into the station by Wednesday, February eighth, or we get out of it. That's, that's right. The, that's no, it's, a, it, it's it's a two on two <laughs> challenge, and we face two people from the school, not players, That's right. and not basketball coaches. One is the athletic they don't count. director. They're ringers. The other is an administrator who is a non-basketball coach. Preferably the girls' cheerleader sponsor. <laughs> they're, they're always short, good-looking women. And that's what we want out there. Okay. And then I get to guard them. Uh, your student <laughs> boosters may want the renegade, but Mark and I want your athletic director. And ain't, no, we don't. Who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> Read it the way it's written. Joe, now what are you saying? Anyway, the next two weeks, the highest school in pledging wins the two on two competition. Gotta be under the four hundred dollar over the four hundred dollar. And I know that they're they're gathering in numbers in North Judson. <laughs> I, I was so there last why. week and the folks are, the folks are telling me they're ready for that. So join us for the next two weeks and be a part of that and make your pledge to a round ball review. We're ready for the renegade poll. The poll of renown. Still led by Maryville. They may have to lose more than one to get out of that top, top spot. But the West Side Cougars are saying, hey, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now, Renegade. We're 8-1. and one. We beat Roosevelt same week they beat Maryville. We should be number one. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Wirt Troopers. I believe Wirt's correct record is 7-2. and two. The Renegade sometimes gets ahead of himself. Uh, Lou Wallace, 8-4, and four, but uh, one of the losses to Warsaw, one of the losses to Maryville. Kokomo so that's nothing, no shame. Mm. Kokomo as well. Roosevelt, 5-4. and four. Tough competition for the Velt. And uh, sometimes the Velt gets that little bit of an edge because you know the Renegade likes them so That's much. Right. Andrea and up in the number six position. Bishop Knoll, seventh, even though Knoll has defeated Andrea. Yeah. A little bit of a blip <laughs> in the schedule there. <laughs> but uh, North Judson, eight. I hear people talking about how North Judson is one of the top 20 teams in the state. Well, let's, let's hang on. Maybe in a while. Maybe in a while. you got to keep moving on through the sea. Roll up the winds, boys. Roll up the winds. Valparaiso, a great job this year, seven and three. A lot of people thought they'd be three and seven right now. And East Chicago, six and four. East Chicago's getting slammed a little bit, but the road to the regional championship always goes through Roosevelt well, and East Chicago. They had a major Chicago. acquisition last week, so that's going to help them. As far as those girls are concerned, <laughs> East Chicago still number one. Uh, but still, the competition now gets a little tougher for East Chicago. Just, Renne just Renne keep little, winning, girls. Renegade's a little winning. slow. They're 14 and 0 <laughs> after the right. tonight. <laughs> Lake Central, 13 and 2. Uh, against a significantly tougher schedule. Valparaiso 12 and 1 with their uh, with a victory over Lake Central and the Lost East Chicago, so there's no shame there. Crown Point 10 4 Chesterton is 11 and 3 as you see there on the board. Lou Walsh, I think Lou Walsh's correct record is 9 and 5, not 10 and 4. Bishop Knoll with Jennifer Cantrell is uh, in there at the number 7 position. There you see the North Judson girls, KV girls, very close those two and Wheeler with a record of 10 and 2. They're in at the number 10 position. All right. Got through that boys and girls renegade, which means what's ready for the boys and girls mean? schedule. Boys schedule for Friday, girls schedule oh, for Saturday. Let's check hitters. it out. Some heavy Northwest hitters on Indiana the line. High School basketball. There's the Doolin slate. Maryville at Chesterton, Rogers at Crown Point, Valpo at the Laporte. Our slow roll is back this week, folks. It is the slow roll. <laughs> Nothing like a slow roll. Hammond at Highland. Big one. That's a big one. In the Lake Ten. And Noel at Morton. That's another big one as well. Munster at Gavitt, KV at River. Oh, but look down in Gary, down in the Steel City. West got, at Work and the, Miller. You got the Troopers, and, and, and you got the Cougars. Oh, and uh, nobody's going to come out of that alive. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Hanover at Westville, Couts at Washington Township. Wheeler Morgan Doolin, that's at not La a bad game. And uh, Couts undefeated at Washington Township. Tough challenge, tough challenge on the board. Saturday, of course, uh, the Crown Point Lady Bulldogs at home. Right after that wrestling meet. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> and North Judson takes a challenge from Benton Central. Don't know how good a team Benton Central has this year, yeah. but they'll be coming in. Might, might, might cause some trouble for the, for the Judson girls. 7565656 is the number to call if you're an intelligent high school basketball fan <laughs> and want to have a question or a comment on uh, high school basketball. 
756-5656. Anything at all. Boy schedules, girl schedules, or television schedules. <laughs> Whatever you like to discuss. Any schedule. See, we'll I, do. 756-5656. I, 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 one other thing I wanted to say about that, about the, 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 the controversy involving the TV and U.S. cable <laughs> is that I have a game, uh, I have a taped game of Roosevelt, uh, Ishikawa Roosevelt and Gary Roosevelt from 12 years ago. It's a classic game. That game would be totally lost in people's memory if no one broadcast the game. It was broadcast on the old Channel 50. I just say somehow this week East Chicago work out a deal whereas that game can be on tape. Because these two, this series of games between Lake Central and East Chicago girls the last two years have been classics. They have been absolute classics and they should be recorded, you know, for, for you know, for posterity. Because let's be honest, in a, in a couple of years, Lake Central and East Chicago aren't going to have teams of this, this caliber. Sure, sure. And uh, you're going to remember these as the glory days. You want to write and comment to Round Ball Review, there's our address, 8625 Indiana Place in Merrillville. We would enjoy hearing from you. Questions, comments, and the always popular criticisms. <laughs> you know, all, like those it. are all, all welcome. <laughs> all welcome here. Uh, uh, questions and comments to Joe and the criticisms to me. I believe we have a caller on the line. Yeah, this is Milos from Munster. Is this the Milos? Yes. Well, there, are, there aren't that many yeah, guys named Milos. What are you saying? <laughs> is this the state's second leading scorer? Yeah. How you doing out there? Hey, I got a question. Go ahead. Yeah. What does it take for us to get in the renegade pool? Yeah, good well, question. I, I, I would have Maybe to say... Maybe a couple wins over Highland. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How about that? Oh, no, that wasn't a, that wasn't a nice thing well, to say, you know, Joe. That he was nice asking. Thing. I figured I'd supply him with an answer. <laughs> that was not a nice hey, thing we'll to say. Hey, we'll take them in sectionals. Don't worry. There you go. That's the important one, right? That's right. That is the important one. So you are having an outstanding season. Are you still you shooting feeling? over 70% from the field there, Milos? Yeah, as far as I know. How's the back? How are you feeling? Pretty good. No problems. No problem. That's good. That's good because the injury uh, yeah, it was tough last year. Knocked you out last year, and uh, but since then you have had a stellar year. Congratulations on that season so far. Hey, thanks a lot. Okay, Milos Puyo calling us, the state's second leading scorer. Hey, Twenty-nine heavy points. hitters call right hey, while maybe we'll get a call from Stephanie White. <laughs> <laughs> Brian from Gary. They Go held ahead, her. They Brian. held her. They held her to 66 on Hello? Friday night. Hello, Hello Brian. <laughs> yeah, I was calling for, for the prediction of the week. Work okay. about 15 on West Side tomorrow whoa, at work. Oh, come on. That's getting out of line. Now, you know, they slow, methodical blowout. work by 15? But a uh, cool blowout or more. I, I don't want to remind you of the holiday tournament. Uh, do I have to remind you? Yeah, but we beat them, though, at home, though. You see what happened when they came to our den, though. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's true. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, unbeatable at home. But you know, the, you unbeatable know, at home. Uh, unbeatable is what we're hearing. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Hey, it, 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 this, this is a pretty good year in, in Gary. You know, if you're going into Gary to play somebody, you better hope it's Horace Mann. Uh, <laughs> no, no offense. No offense to anybody, Horace Mann. But everybody in Gary's stuff. Uh, can you, uh, uh, rank the teams in Gary for us. He's off the line. We've got Jared oh, that's and Highland. That's a shame. I Jared wanted, and Highland. Go ahead, Jared. Um, I want to know why Highland isn't in the re renegade poll. Why aren't the Trojans in the renegade well, poll? Well, you know, the 8-2 record is, is, is outstanding. But, uh, you know, you, you got to look at who would they edge out in that poll. <laughs> they, the 10th the ranked team is East Jared, Chicago. Jared, all you need to know is Roosevelt has four losses and they're at number five. East Chicago has four losses and they're at number well, 10. No, no, wait a minute, Roosevelt <laughs> has some significant wins, too. One of which I might have heard of last Saturday. In the, it was in all the papers, the triple overtime game, you might remember it. You don't think the Highland win over Munster twice was big? Well, they were big, but there's big and then there's huge. Okay. And uh, Roosevelt, okay. it, it, let's be honest, the Roosevelt win over Maryville is probably the biggest regular season win by anybody over anybody else in this area in about 10 or 15 years. I think Jermaine is on the line to talk some trash. Go ahead, Jermaine. Hey, that's what we're here for. Jermaine. Yes. How are you there? All right. Go ahead. Uh, I think work will be West Side tomorrow. You think so, huh? Uh-huh. What leads you to believe that they can handle the side tomorrow night? Easy. We got a little zone, a couple of zones for West Side. Oh, yeah, you might have a couple. That's right. I think that's the way to go. That might be the way to go. Is the perimeter shooting maybe the one weakness of West Side? Could be. I'll tell you what, though. I, I hear those McQuay brothers. They're looking for you. <laughs> They're gonna, they're gonna slap your stuff back into the upper deck. That's, Gotta, that's, what, that's what they say. Call from Noel on the line. The, the Warriors have had a couple wins over the weekend. Greg, go ahead. Yes, I was wondering how you think Noel's gonna fare against Morton tomorrow. Big game tomorrow, Greg. Yeah. 
You know, I, I like the way the Noel kids play. Uh, there you see Mark's pick. He likes the Warriors tomorrow. Uh, I must admit, I think Noel, the inside game is pretty strong. They're going to slow it down a little bit, and I think they'll edge out more. That's going to be a very, you very interesting game. You don't believe in the governor yet, though. They need a well, significant win tomorrow. They, yeah, I think they need. I think a win over Noel for them would be a very, very big win. My, uh, next to, Lake, I think, the Lake Central game, their yeah. biggest win of the year. But uh, I think it's going to be Noel on Friday night. Mike from Crown Point, go ahead. Hey, what's up there? What's going on? Hey, man, what's going on? Uh, Look at that Saturday night pick. What did you say? State champ goes down to Andrean. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Mike. Yeah. Do you have a, a, a question for us tonight? Yeah, well, you know, I was just wondering what you think about our team this year. Down uh, at Crown Point? Crown Point? We just talked to Coach Rich Severa. We could send Mike back to Fox News or maybe something educational. He looked like he needed <laughs> something tonight. Will Go ahead. Will Todd from Munster's <laughs> on the line. Go ahead, Todd. Oh, this is Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Good. Yeah. Um, well, first thing I want to say is uh, we want you two-on-two two here in Munster. We're going to get you. Oh, you think so? You got that $400 out there for yeah, us? Yeah, we got, we got a science got teacher it? that could probably just dunk right over you from about the free throw line. Oh. Just, so, <laughs> just so it's not Milos. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we want no Milos, believe me. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could talk Milos into being our coach or assistant coach. Or, yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe uh, our shooting coach. That, that, <laughs> That's, that, that's, that's yeah. like playing tennis against that Kelly yeah. Hayes they got over there. No, no, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be part of that either. either. We don't want to be part of that either. Uh, I just want to know about uh, the Highland Munster matchup. Maybe that might come along in sectional time. You know, uh, Could be. Highland's pretty much dominated so far, but I, I, I just want to know what you think about Milos and versus Sasha. they got two big butts to be throwing around in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, those are two guys, you know, hitters. those are two guys that could get some work done over there at Langles probably. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you, those... Her Sasha hangs out there a little too. Uh, <laughs> Sasha is a big boy, big, big boy, and and uh, you know I'm kind of surprised that uh, Highland has won both games from them yeah. so far. Brooks from East Chicago, go ahead. How you doing, guys? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I just want to compliment you on your show and your coverage of local sports. I think you guys do an excellent job. Thank you. And also, I just want to just give a, a, a big shout out to all the, all the players and everything, especially the girls from Lake Central and East Chicago Central, because they really handled the pressure well, and I think this game is probably going to be one of the best games to ever hit this area, yeah, and hopefully everything be. can get resolved. Should be. Let's hope so. Thanks for the call, Brooks, and uh, I think the Lake Central girls were getting an early scouting report on East Chicago Tuesday yeah, night. They were all in they're attendance. They were all sitting in the yeah. stands uh, you know, laughing and scratching while East Chicago was winning. Last call. Lee from North Judson. Go ahead, Lee. Um, I have a question about North Judson and the Renegade Pole. Why are they only rated A? Good question, well, Lee. Why are they A? Uh, again, because uh, you know they they don't really have a significant win. They came close to Maryville, but they don't really have a significant win. And uh, you know, to be honest, their schedule is a little down this year. Their schedule's been tough, been tougher in the yeah. past. Even the Valpo team they'll play at the end of the year is yeah. not as tough as. It, although Valpo's had a very good year, yeah, Let, know, let's look ahead to that Valpo. You never know with a small school like North Jetson when you're going to have a good team and when you're not. And they tried to schedule oh, yeah. up the last no two years at Maryville, but maybe if they could have taken a South Bend Clay or a South Bend Riley out of that South Bend area and put them on their schedule. That would have helped out. It's not their fault. Yeah. It's just a situation okay. where the schedule's not that tough to see. Don't forget, we begin our two-week of pledge next Thursday night oh when uh, <laughs> we'll be looking for a two-on-two -two competition. I guess we will be. Yeah. Tune in next Thursday at 9 for Round Ball Review. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks to our underwriters. Thanks for you, the fans, for making this show possible. And our underwriters, the next week, uh, continue to make it possible. You guys over at East Chicago work something out of that television <laughs> thing. And, and for the two-on-two, -two, we want the librarian and the cheerleader sponsor against That's me it. and Joe. All right, we'll see you next week. <laughs>